Howdy, hey, hi, it's Spaceman Josh here, and welcome back to Factorio. So we were just about to go off exploring, so I'm going to zoom very much out so I can keep an eye on my surroundings. I don't know why I didn't, didn't do that in the, in the end of the last episode. And we'll go ahead and just start heading west, seeing if we can find ourselves a uranium ore deposit. Looks like we've got some stone lower left. There doesn't seem to be really anything in the immediate vicinity. we got some iron ahead of us. You can see it both on the in-game and on the map. I think from here, let's go and look at where our map is at. Okay. So I think from here, what I probably will do is I'll head north a little bit and try to see if I can sort of open up this sort of area of the map. There's some water. With coal right next to it. That would have been a... That's usually really nice to find during a spawn, is to have water with coal right next to it. Makes it really easy to get electricity going. There's some coal up in, near, in the middle of the forest, too. A little some stone right here. Still no signs of uranium. How far north are we? Alright, so... One more... Uh, actually, two more boxes, and then we'll go ahead and head, start heading east. Uh, start heading yeah, east again. There's one. There's two. So we're gonna go ahead and start heading east again to start sort of closing a path. More patches of coal, as well as another a decent sized patch of stone. Nothing of immediate interest in terms of uranium. Some iron. Walking into another forest. Go ahead and start heading north. Lots of forests around here, I noticed. So they're not very big, but they're still, there's a you know, there's a lot of them. There's some more crude oil. How much combined? This one seems to be separate for some reason. It says 399% combined. That's a nice one. This one has about 1750. I wonder why that one's considered separate. We have all this. Is this one really 390? Yeah, that one alone has crude oil yield 399%. That's a, this is a really good location for oil. This might be sort of like an oil outpost. What does my map look like? Yeah, this this can definitely be. This is good. I can take this up this way. Eventually, having like an oil outpost out this way for the train. May not have found some uranium yet, but that's still a really good find.
Seems we have more iron. Still haven't seen much uranium. Kind of sad about. There's more stone and more copper. No, that's not stone. That's just. Well, it might be. I just can't. See, maybe I just can't see it. But there is definitely more copper over here. There's like another little mini area for like a mine of, uh, of sorts. I'm gonna zoom in so I can navigate through this forest. This is a big forest. Now I'm just taking the long way. Almost through most of the forest. We got our auto save, so to make sure the game happens. It's always nice. I've had to rely on that a couple of times. When you get to uh, train systems, it is very, very, very possible to get run over by the train and die. I have, I'm kind of sad to say I've done it a little too many times for, um, for me to, the night, probably what I should have. We got a decent map now. I think there was a, yeah, there, there's like a tiny bit right up here, and there's a, another thing of oil right up here too. I think our best bet for uranium ore though is still this 107,000, which I'm kind of sad about, but at least we found a decent place for oil. That just means hopefully maybe somewhere uh, in the southwest or even just in the south there might be some uranium. I like trying to have them like sort of like a, a simple-ish sort of system for trains. Like being able to um, have sort of like a circular or sort of a square like uh, system into in which the train will travel. Um, but I'm still open to being able to have like a chain that just goes away and then loops back around back to the main part of the system. But usually I, I like having the that sort of circular motion of being able to control how, uh, you know, the stops that they go to and have it basically as efficient as possible. I feel like the logistics too has gone down, like something stopped making something. You'd think they'd be farther by now. I know it's still going strong. Maybe it's just since it is 200, it just looks like it's not doing much. I know in previous episodes I said I wouldn't do it, but I'm I'm thinking about uh, having a second lab and having some connecting it. So since I'll be making it anyway eventually, I'll go ahead and make that. And then I can have uh, another output right up, like up here, taking a conveyor belt underground over to here, as well as a output from here to input into the lab. Place that right there. For this, we'll need an underground railroad and some more normal ones. Can this go far enough? No, it cannot. So I'll have to make a second one. And here we go. 
it is time for this episode's nerd alert. So this for today, I got a big one for you. I mean, literally, I'm talking about the star V Y Canis Major uh, Majoris. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I pronounce it. Uh, v Y Canis Majoris. It is a red hypergiant, and the reason why I'm talking about it today is it is the largest known star in the galaxy that we have found, or just general, the only stars we've discovered are in our own galaxy, so it is the largest star we have ever discovered. It is, so it's, you know, it's a, it's, uh, it's called a hypergiant, sort of, it's, it's a very rare category, meaning it is just, it, it's, it's, the size is pretty much incomprehensible. Uh, we can fit 9.3 billion suns inside Via White Canis Majoris. Not Earth's, suns. 9.3 billion suns. That's also the equivalence. If we can put a million Earths in our in our sun, that means that we can fit in Via White Canis Majoris 9.3 quadrillion Earths. That's 9.3 million billion Earths. That is numbers that frankly most people including myself just can't comprehend the numbers are just so big that it's it's something that you can't really ever fully understand it's just like astronomical time scales it's another concept we humans since we with with our concept of time and like our lifespans and the things we see it's just things we can't fully comprehend and fully truly know and so VY Canis Majoris is in the uh, constellation Canis Major. Uh, uh, Canis Major. Uh, most people can recognize Canis Major with the asterism, uh, the Big Dipper. And so it is about uh, 4,900 light years from Earth. And, it, and like I said in the beginning, it is the largest star we have ever found. And so with this uh, episode's Nerd Alert out of the way, let's go ahead and get back into the game. So they made our little underground belt again. And so I'll need three of these inserters. Two down here to place in the lab. And one up here to take out from up here. Make one more conveyor belt. Place it down like that. Do I have an electric pole? I do! No, let me place it. There we go. Let me take it. There we go. I'll go ahead and place it like this. And so now we will be twice as fast in sort of producing things that we need for research. Let's look at the. So we have 492, 604, those are good numbers. 479, 243, those are still decently good. Instead of walking all the way over there, let's just zoom in. 13, 18, 21, and 8. How many we got in here? 262. Amazing. Let's take a look at the chest. That is probably almost completely full. It's about halfway full, actually. It's not that bad. Let's go ahead and take this and just kind of place this right here and take this, place it right there. As my mouse attempts to stop double clicking. Yeah, so we're about halfway full. Once it gets completely full, what I can do is I can just completely, re I can place a new chest right on top of it and it'll replace it uh, depending on if there's enough slots for all this stuff in it. But that, that means I can take the infinity chest, that's my trash can, just immediately place it right in the same place as this chest. It'll have all the uh, copper in it, and then I can just pl replace down the iron chest, and all that copper will now be, you know, uh, taken out, completely destroyed, and allow for more copper to be placed back into the chest. Let's take a look if the radar has done anything sort of more seeking out. Seems to be going in this direction uh, with this radar, and these radars seem to be going sort of this way. And so I think we found another thing of coal. 1.5 million, that must be a decently, like, rich thing, because it's about the same size, if not smaller, than this one up here. And it's, you know, three times as big. This one's at 2.8 million, and it's a slightly bigger, so I mean, I don't, I shouldn't speak too soon. I also haven't checked out any of these stone things over here. 1.8, 1.7. 
Well, 10 million iron ore, that might be a good place for steel. That might be like oil and steel. That might be sort of where I build those things. What's this over here? How much is over here? 2 million. Because that that's, is, this is definitely where I'm doing my oil stuff. All the major oil stuff, at least like 99% of it will be done over here for sure. And then I can I can debate whether I want to do the steal over with the 10 million over the 2 million. Because, I mean, 10 million would be like for the long game. But I don't know how much farther into the long game I need to be going. Because, like I said, I haven't really made it very far into the game enough to make the rocket silo. Because it is a good distance away. But I don't think I'll be using, you know, 10 million iron ore for steel when my basic beginning factory is only 1.1 million. Actually, now that I say that, that's probably what I'll end up doing is the 10 million will be for the new factory, like the new iron factory. I can like place it, like make it go up and have the iron stuff go down, have sort of a loop around for the rails. And then the 2 million over here can be for the steel. But when this iron runs out, I have a 10 million deposit that I can have access to via rails if I need to. And so I should also then, by that logic, also start looking for more copper. This one is a little, almost a million. My copper I have for the main factory is at 1.1. Got 582k over there. So I still have yet to find a decent uranium ore deposit and a decent uh, uh, secondary copper ore deposit for when I expand my factory or have to relocate my factories. 1.3 million for stone is good for now until I can have enough rails to get way over here. And plus, I don't want three portions of, a, of the main factory being in the same location. That just creates too much clutter in terms of the long game. So I might do it like the 1.8 million if I don't find a better spot. Uh, but enough of my rambling. Let's go ahead and try continuing on looking into what we want to do next in terms of the game. Our injury right now is at seven or eight, so like seven and a half. Um, still, our uh, chest uh, capacity is still in really good shape. I don't think there really is m a whole lot left to do until we can start really getting some of these research things done, other than just go out and explore, trying to find the things we need. But again, f going out all of those distances is really going to be inefficient, and it's going to take. It's, it's going to take the same amount of time to go out and expand it as much as it is just to build the rails and then have the train go out there. So it's not entirely worth it until you really are take things, ready to take things out there. I think what I just said made sense. I hope it did. Let's take a look at the steel. I know this might be getting low right now. Oh, one. Yeah, so... I'll go ahead and some of them are getting low. So I'll just go ahead and reactivate the coal mine by going through and picking up a lot. I'm thinking three stacks of it, plus then some. Because then I can bring almost all of these up as close as I can to a stack. Take that up to a stack. Bring this up to a stack. Same with this. And then just place the rest in here, 36. So I need 14 to create that final stack. 10, 17, too much. Just drop three. Actually, you know what I'll do? Just for just for the fun of it, I'll place down two. I'll drop two. I'll keep one of them. I'll drop the last one, as, and we'll follow it along the conveyor belt. I'm going on an adventure with the coal, just to see where it goes. We'll even give it a name. I'm trying to think what I want to name it. I'm thinking Tim, but I don't want to quite. I don't. That's still not. It's not like the only reason I'm thinking Tim is because I recently watched a Markiplier video. So that's 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 not why I don't want that to be the reason why I name it Tim. 
Uh, we'll name it Jonathan. We'll follow Jonathan. And we'll pause it here, and we'll follow Jonathan in the next video. Because <laughs> we have reached the 20 minute mark. So, thank you all for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more of my videos and, and hear more nerd alerts, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you wish, turn on notifications. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Spaceman Josh, out.